Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about twists. Now, we've all got our favourite moments in films which pull more rug than I do at the weekends, but that's not always necessarily a good thing and can in fact take a film that's pretty awesome into a film that's pretty ass. So let's take a look at some of these together today, shall we? Yes, we shall. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and these are seven movies that were ruined by one misguided scene. Gosh dang and blast it. On with the list. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number seven, I'm also just a girl, Notting Hill. You know what, it's not very cool to admit it, but Notting Hill is a pretty bloody fantastic romance. It's also got a quite interesting concept of just what happens if an average Joe ends up dating one of the most prolific movie stars of all time. It's something I actually quite enjoy watching. That said, you do get a moment of pure ham-fisted cornball that would make even me shudder. Yes, you know the bit I'm talking about, the bit that Richard Curtis clearly showcases that he wrote this thing, which is the corny line that says, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Oh God, it still makes me sick thinking about it. Disgusting! Number six, Pinbacker, Sunshine. Now, director Danny Boyle should be admired for his ability to work with pretty much any genre, and he proved for the most part in Sunshine that he could also tackle the sci-fi genre pretty well. That is, uh, that is until the final few scenes, which do add in a bit of a weird campy slasher horror vibe. Now, I absolutely love this film. I love this film hands down, but I have to admit that the moment that Pinbacker was introduced, uh, it did lose its tone a little bit. I mean, it did feel ridiculously tacked on, telling the story of a nearly naked beef jerky man who, while most likely being riddled with cancer, still managed to be stronger than anyone who challenged him. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love this film, but we have to admit, tone went out the window a bit there, didn't it? Number five, I'm Mad, Red River. Now, Red River is a pretty highly regarded western, telling the story of a father and son who basically end up hating each other, each saying that they're gonna kill one another, and it builds and builds and builds into something that unfortunately smacks of studio interference. You know the bit that I'm talking about, over the course of two hours, we see these two square off against each other and basically square up and say, we're going to kill each other and who's gonna survive? And then uh, the moment that they actually get together, somebody busts in front of them and just scolds them like a pair of cheeky whippets. Not what we were expecting, not at all. In fact, in the original ending, the son was meant to kill the father and that would have been a much better ending for the entire affair, but alas and alack, he didn't shoot him in the back. Number four, the Australians, Django Unchained. By the time that you get to the Australian scene in Django Unchained, it's pretty understandable that you'd be quite tired. I mean, we've seen more bloody action and more bloody whipping than your mum likes in her BDSM nights. There's my one per list. And now, on top of all of that, we have to deal with Quentin Tarantino's acting. Now, it's not terrible, but it does remove audiences from the scene because it takes quite a long time to basically re-establish that Django needs to escape and get the dynamite. I mean, if we're being brutally honest, we could make this about a third of the length and cut about 48 of the mates out of it. Too many mates for my liking. Number three, The Fake Escape, The Escapist. The Escapist, starring Brian Cox, was for the most part a pretty entertaining and thrilling thriller about the story of a man who needs to break out of prison to help his drug adult daughter. But the wheels kind of fell off in the final scenes where we're told a weird dual time narrative where they are escaping and then they have escaped and it all gets a bit confusing until you realize that neither are very true. And in fact, the people didn't escape at all and it's actually just the dying imagination of the main character. It was a lazy cop out. I mean, the way that the project was actually filmed, it was suggested that they were never really going to escape, so this just felt a bit cheap. Number two, Hallelujah, Watchmen. Zack Snyder's version of The Watchmen was met with a kind of mixed response upon its release. Some praised it as the best superhero movie going at the time, while others basically said, how have you managed to do this, Zack? How have you managed to make it so that you have followed the comic book exactly to the point where it's a bit bland and boring and doesn't make any sense, but also missed out tons and tons of detail, meaning that it's not for fans nor casual viewers. It was kind of a masterpiece in that regard. I actually really liked it, but the one thing that I could have definitely done without was one of Zack Snyder's insisted film scenes. 
You know the bit I'm talking about, the awkward sex scene that was inserted with Hallelujah playing in the background and it was just set inside an airship. It was super weird, super uncomfortable and if you were unfortunate enough to be watching this with your kids or my god your parents, it felt like f***ing years before this scene ended. <sighs> Skin crawlingly bad. And number one, The Makeover, The Breakfast Club. Now I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that John Hughes' seminal teen flick is meant to be about the story of basically accepting yourself, no matter who you are, and being okay with that. That's what I got from the film, and for the most part the film does follow that, until the point where we basically get the makeover scene in which the jock falls in love with the basket case just because she's basically put a bow in her hair. It came out of nowhere and kind of really suggested that the tone of the film was less about acceptance of the self and more about, yeah, being yourself's pretty good, but if you actually slapped on a bit of makeup every once in a while, maybe you'd get pulled. Not a great message. But then again, this was the 80s, so things were different back then, I guess. I mean, I'm a product of it, and look at me. As a side note, actually, you should definitely be happy being you. Just putting that out there. You have a great day, no matter what you're getting up to, you know what, people will gravitate towards you if you're just confident in yourself. And if you're not confident in yourself, go and speak to people about it. Make sure that everyone's aware that there's a, there's a dialogue going on. That's just between me and you. Actually, you know what, just chuck me a message, Retro J with a zero, if you're not feeling too well. I'll probably pop you a joke, maybe. And there we go, those were seven films that were hampered by a misguided scene. Let me know what you thought about them down in the comments section below. And if you like the sound of my voice, why don't you go up to the gaming channel and check out this, which is on achievements that made you feel bad. Or you can check out that film theory where I've just done a new voiceover on whether or not Harry Potter was secretly being trained to be an obscurial. Not that you can really train an obscurial, but you know what I mean. Or maybe you don't, go check out the video, there's a nice plug for it there. Anyway, as always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.